Hey, Walking Dead fans, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a review of a webisode. Yep, a long time ago webisode, not anything recent. It's possibly the only webisode I haven't reviewed. And this one was Cold Storage. Cold Storage premiered October 1st, 2012. So there were four individual parts to Cold Storage. And as far as the timeline goes, this actually occurred before season one. Of course, after the outbreak started, but before we see Rick wake up from the coma. And the webisode was done in order to help promote the return of season three. The webisode follows this guy named Chase. We're first introduced to Chase. He's lying on a rooftop. He's with this other guy, Harris. And they're pretty much, they're looking around. They see this building, a storage facility. And Harris says, hey, let's go grab some supplies. They're looking for a truck, to, way to get out of there. In the background, you can see Atlanta. So Chase and Harris, they go down to the ground. They try to get around to that storage um, building facility, and Harris gets bitten. He kind of starts going through some stuff, uh, scavenging, and doesn't pay attention, and he gets bitten. So Chase, he keeps running to the storage facility, busts open the door, and goes in. But some walkers come in behind him. He goes into one of those storage units with like a garage door kind of thing on it, and... It gets hung up, the walkers try to come in under, and there's gunshots. Pow, pow, pow. Someone has just killed the walkers and saved him, but who? And that's the end of the first one. Part 2 opens up a voice, tells Chase to come on out. It's a guy who worked at the facility, BJ. He has the M16, pretty much is going to tell dude to just, he's going to let him back out the door, and he needs to just keep on going. Chase is asking for a truck, just let me get one of the trucks. BJ doesn't seem willing to negotiate like that, but Chase then says something about the generators in the building. Each floor has its own generator. The one on the floor above wasn't working. Chase, I guess, is some type of mechanic guy. He says, I can get it running. And, you know, when I was thinking that, I thought it'd be like it's going to take some tools and he's a mechanic kind of guy. When it all kind of goes down a little bit later, he just flips a breaker or something, but whatever. BJ agrees, okay, you fix the generator, I'll get you a truck, and you get on out of here. Because here's one kicker. Chase says he's on his way to try to find his sister, and they're going to get with a caravan and head to Washington, D.C. They hear there's a safe zone. And his sister had texted him like four days prior. I'm guessing the service went out. He's still trying to get to his sister in Cynthiana, Kentucky. And the Easter egg or call out to the comic book there is that's where Rick Grimes is actually from. The Grimes family and Shane are in that town in Kentucky, not in uh, near Atlanta. The hospital and the town is actually a real place. That's where Robert Kirkman is from. So that's pretty cool, a pretty cool call out. And that's where this guy is headed to try to find his sister. This is your classic 5x10. Used to belong to a cop. So as BJ and Chase, they're kind of walking through, BJ unlocks uh, one of the lockers, storage lockers, and says, hey, uh, this is uh, used to be some cops, so you can find some clothes in there. So as Chase goes in there and he's kind of looking through a box, who would have thunk it? It's Rick Grimes' family's storage locker. So we actually get to see Chase look at a picture of Rick uh, in, as a cop. We see Shane and Rick in a photo. Then we see the family. We see Carl and Lori and just family photos. So that's a pretty cool thing that they threw in there, um, a little tidbit of the Grimes family. But Chase gets a shirt, and he ends up in BJ's office. This is when he ends up going to fix the generator. He pretty much only has to flip a breaker. But during all of that... Um, a walker comes up on him, has a name tag, Lenny. Chase has to kill the guy. He comes back and asks BJ about him because there's some employee photos on the wall. And you see Lenny and there's some other people. There's a girl, Kelly. And BJ says that Lenny didn't make it and that Kelly didn't even show up. She called in sick that day, the day um, the shit went down or whatever. So it ends up that BJ says, hey, let's take these bodies, Lenny's and these others we've killed, and take them out to the dock. And as Chase rolls a cart full of walkers out to this dumpster, he turns around and BJ shoots him 
supposedly shoots him in the head and says, uh, tell your sister I said hello. Then coming back into the next part of the webisode, we see that Chase was only grazed. So he wakes up in the dumpster a little, some unknown time later, right? And finally gets out and heads around the building where he encounters several walkers and one of them is Harris. You'd think Harris would have gotten eaten a little more, but he doesn't look very eaten. But anyway, he's a walker and Chase kills him with a cinder block. Then he finds his way back into the building. He goes to BJ's office and gets his gun that's leaning up against the wall. And he sees on a monitor that BJ is coming out of a certain numbered locker or room. So uh, Chase goes and BJ, I guess, is gone. But he goes into that room and finds that Kelly, the girl he said called in sick, is tied up to the bed in like some exotic wear. BJ had been taking advantage of her all of this time against her will. She was tied up to the bed. So Chase frees her, and they're going to go try to get the hell out of there. And before they can get away, BJ confronts them, catches them, and has a gun as well pointed at Chase. Chase has his pointed at him. It's like a a standoff. BJ pretty much says, you leave Kelly here with me, and you're just going out of here. And eventually he pretty much agrees because he doesn't want to get shot. He wants to get away alive. So Kelly ends up behind BJ and ends up decapitating him. And they leave his head on his desk in his office for some reason so he can watch the monitors. But they do end up getting into a truck. They have some keys. uh, It's low on gas, but they start to get away. And we don't know their fate. We don't know what happened to Chase or Kelly. Uh, We never have heard of them since. They were on their way, or at least Chase was on his way to find his sister and make it to D.C. But we do know as far as D.C., as far as a safe zone, there isn't one or it fell. We know that that happened. So if they did ever end up making it to D.C., D.C. fell. And if they lived through that, we just don't know. Overall, I thought Cold Storage was an okay one. It wasn't my favorite out of all of them. It was directed by Greg Nicotero. The makeup, the walkers, and all of that was really good. I think it won a few awards, even. But overall, it was good. It told a little story. It threw some Easter eggs out to the main show with Rick's uh, storage locker. And also Chase trying to get to Cynthiana, Kentucky, which was the Grimes family home in the comics and creator Robert Kirkman's home in real life. And also Tony Moore, who was the first artist for the comic Walking Dead. It's his hometown as well. But that's a quick review of Cold Storage, the webisodes. There's four parts. I'll put some links so you can find it and watch it down in the description below. I'll add this video into my playlist of webisodes walking dead webisodes and if you want to check that out i'll put that link in the description below as well and i've got a ton of other great walking dead videos of just all kinds and ranges and sorts reviews and history stuff back in uh, the cdc just all kinds of different things so definitely subscribe for more walking dead content from this channel and as always thanks for watching stay tuned for more dead stuff